under the scope. Hey everybody, Jared and Shane here for another Scope Instant Movie review. Yes. This time, we uh, took a look at uh, David O. Russell's follow-up to Silver Linings Playbook. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are talking about American the, Hustle, the Oscar bait <laughs> of a film, American <laughs> Hustle, uh, starring a number of people from Silver Linings Playbook. You've got Bradley Cooper, indeed, Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence, and you've got Christian the, Bale, Christian Bale, Amy Adams, Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, Jeremy Renner, uh, a couple guys from Boardwalk Empire. Yep. Uh, a, a fun cameo that we're not going to spoil. It mm -hmm. was a surprise. Um, and this uh, is a period movie, Jared. It takes place... Uh, 1978. 1978 with some flashbacks that go back a little bit earlier. But uh, generally, it's, uh, as I like to call it, the year after Star Wars. Because that's how everything is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're not wrong. Um, and uh, it tells the tale of uh, a lot of hustling in America. Yeah, and that's it. That's all you need to know. No. Jared, tell us a little bit more about this. I challenged you for a good synopsis of this film, because I certainly am not smart enough to wrap my head around it. All right, so Christian Bale plays a character named Irving. Amy Adams plays a character named Sydney. They meet at a pool party sometime in the past, and they sort of connect right away. Yep. Um, and uh, they connect to the point where Irving kind of lets her in on the fact that he's a con artist. Uh, his, his business is uh, promising to give loans to people who are kind of hard on their luck, and yep. he's got his uh, $5,000 down payment, which is non-refundable, and the catch is he never actually gives them their money. The loans never go through because there's no, never any money to start with. Right. So she is on board, and together they start to yep. grow the business, uh, become uh, very, very financially uh, profitable. They get a new office, but eventually they run afoul of the law, uh, and they're busted. They're, they're busted by, uh, well, I mean, it sort of spoils it, but they're busted by Bradley Cooper. Yeah, an over-eager FBI agent. Um, looking to take these small fish and hook himself some big fish. Right. So he ends up putting, basically putting the squeeze on them and saying, look, you can, you can get out of this if you help me con some bigger fish. Yeah. You guys are small potatoes. So they basically have no choice but to go along with it, and our story unfolds. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it, eventually they start uh, dealing with... Uh, government officials yep. uh, things get more and more they yeah. things get bigger and bigger and more dangerous and uh, obviously uh, certain they're not whatever I mean it, it just gets bigger and more complicated and more dangerous as things go along so that's really all you need to know yeah well we, d we didn't really mention what Jennifer Lawrence's role okay was. yeah she is Irvin's wife wife uh, she's a bit loco She's a little crazy, she's manipulative, but she yeah. has a son that Irving has uh, adopted. adopted as his own. And exactly. He sort of enjoys having this family life and also this relationship on the side with Sydney. So so she sort of flitters in and out of the story yeah. as as uh, she would, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, I, it's difficult to give this uh, any more uh, talk in terms of the plot because uh, I think you have to watch it to let it unfold and enjoy it yourself. Yeah, and honestly, it's I don't know that the movie is necessarily about the plot, if no. you want my opinion. Um, this is a movie of texture. This is a movie of, of sort of recreating this moment in time uh, and sort of living in it for a little bit. So, yes, there's a story, and it's an interesting story, but that's not necessarily the entire takeaway. I mean, sure. there's sort of... There were people who were really, really fascinated by uh, Christian Bale's character's comb-over, but, yeah. you know, it was definitely a product of the period yeah. so i mean let's let's talk about uh the world that they built. all right so they build so the world they build the world in 1978 which you know i was jared was uh, uh the ripe old age of five i was a ripe young age of four mm -hmm. and um to me it felt like something that was pulled from the corners of my memories of childhood um the the dress yes. the music the everybody smokes lots of cigarettes um, big cars uh, big cars uh, big fur coats big phones uh, <laughs> plunging uh, cleavage mm -hmm. uh, everything I mean it felt it it's crazy but there are scenes in this movie that sort of remind me of when my mom was going out on a date and I remember her getting dressed and yeah. smoking her cigarette and curling her hair and <laughs> yeah there was a lot I mean, of curlers it just, in it this just film. reminded me of being you know. I was young at that time, so I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, memories like I would in the year 1992, for instance. Right. But I, it, it just, it rings true all the way through, you know. Yes. It wasn't like uh, the main characters have the 70s look and then the people in the background have the faux hawks that you oftentimes see in no, uh, I, movies that are period. I mean, they went all the way on and that. And you've definitely got some characters who are who are kind of, you know, f current fashion for the era. And yeah. then you've got some, like you've got Jeremy Renner's character, who's, who's a mayor. 
of Camden, New Jersey, who's definitely sort of stuck back in the 60s a little bit with his, his attire and his style. Uh, and it's a good blend. I like it. Yeah. So you have that, and then you've got the other aspect of the, t of the texture, as, as you're talking about, which are these people, these broken people that you're all, you're all dealing with here, that they're all uh, looking for some sort of truth in their life while always living in a lie. Yeah. I guess that's, that's sort well, of... Uh, uh, Christian Bale's character kind of mentions it r early on in the film, that the world is gray. And that really sort of is exactly what this movie is about. Everything's gray. Uh, you know, everyone's kind of working their own angles, but they're, they're, you know, they're broken and they have their own baggage and it really affects their decisions. Sure. Uh, the, and these, these are, you know, for the most part, these are three dimensional characters. Yeah. With definitely have uh, a previous life that we haven't seen that is informing their decisions and their actions. And that's really interesting to see. And as they go through this film, they are, they are often victims or, or pushing out, uh, uh shifting alliances and, and cons uh, with each other, you know, sometimes who's being straight with who. Mm -hmm. um, and you're why are quite you sure? This? I don't even know if they're quite sure. Yeah, that's it's it's ambiguity that that is the the thread that runs through the entire the entire film. Yeah, and uh, people that think they're doing the right things get burned in the end for what they consider to be right, which may be not not so right. Um, it's, it's fascinating and uh, interesting as you watched it. I thought that our crowd, which was full of 95% press <laughs> and 10% people that uh, stood in line for it. As you know, the press are not people. I I don't know if you felt this way, but I think that there were people laughing at a lot of things that I didn't really find funny. Yeah. You know, like Louis, they, we forgot to mention Louis C.K. Did yeah. we mention him? Louis C.K. Louis C.K. has got a role. Um, he's sort of a bureaucrat within yeah. the FBI, and he has to like approve a lot of requisitions. And, and there's some scenes where that were... You know, he's getting abused or whatever. Yeah. People are laughing. Yeah. Is it? I mean, I don't know if it was meant to be. Maybe that's part of it. I didn't. You and I did not laugh. Yeah, I'm um, like, he yeah. was. <laughs> Louis was funny in this movie. He definitely had funny stuff going on. But there are a lot of scenes in here that you know, when you're seeing mental breakdowns and people fighting and and you know, people putting their hearts out there, and you've got a crowd that just doesn't get the film. Uh, they're looking for something. Maybe they were looking for something different than what. Yeah, they sometimes expected. people. I don't know. Sometimes people laugh though, just to sort of cut the yeah. tension a little bit. So well, maybe people it was were that. laughing in the first ten seconds of the yeah, movie. Yeah, they were fascinated. The, the film opens yeah. with Christian Bale's character uh, uh, doing his comb over. Yeah. He's got an elaborate routine to make him uh, to make himself whole, I guess. Yeah, was, <laughs> and people were. I mean, it was amusing. Yeah, but, but I was more fascinated with the process and like, oh, yeah, that's I've never good. seen a, a comb over like actually take place. So yeah. for me, it was fascinating to watch this this happen and unfold on screen and other people were just laughing like it was you know yeah, a like comedy a, movie yeah what is this, like, dumb this and like Seth Rogen is on screen or something <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about um, the acting and I mentioned earlier this is yet another Oscar bait type of film mm -hmm. uh, who deserves accolades and who is probably going to get the Academy nod in this film I'm sure there may be multiple people uh, I think everyone is great yeah I think, um, I think Amy Adams is the standout I, I would agree I and felt she, like she embodied this character who this this woman that had this past that she never was quite happy with and she was always uh, more than willing to morph into something that she wasn't yep. to better her life yeah she's and definitely got some pain yeah she's got some moments of emotional vulnerability yeah. that just read so right on her face and she's not even saying anything and you just see it in the eyes and sure so, it's a, it's a really good yeah. performance. And I thought Christian Bale was really good, Christian too. Christian Bale was excellent. Although there was, <laughs> there was some times when he, was, when he was bursting into yelling where I'm thinking he's going to say, oh, good oh, for you. Da, 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 it da, da. Oh, da, 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 da. It was awfully close. I mean, everybody was good. I mean, I don't think there was, I don't think that there was a poor performance no. in this. No, even was, Jeremy Renner was great. Yeah. And I, I don't always think that he's a yeah. great actor. I think he, he's good. Right. We're going to your house. La, la, la. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, he even has some great moments where yes. he gets to kind of shine. Everyone has a moment to shine. Yeah. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence, we said before, she's a genius. Or was it uh, someone else who said that? I don't remember. She's very good in this. She's, <laughs> she's very good. good in this movie. But if she's you want, definitely if, a supporting character, yeah. so you don't see a lot of her. But. If you want to do a female lead or female versus female, I think Amy Adams. She may have. She also had more to play with. Yes. But I think everyone was fascinating mm -hmm. in this. Um, it's a quiet movie. You know, it's it's a slow burn in this film. Um, yeah, this isn't like a rock'em sock'em caper. No, it's, it's it's not turning into movie. a Quentin Tarantino. You know, there's a con, there's a con story yeah. to it. Yeah. But like I said before, this is a movie about textures and kind yeah. of living in the moment for a little bit. And there so. there is, I mean, you expect with cons, especially cons gone wrong, 
um, that you expect uh, tension, and there definitely is tension, mm -hmm. but it's not, you know, it doesn't suppress the real goal of this film, which is to learn about these characters right. and, and kind of feel what they're feeling in their hearts, Jared. Agreed. I don't want to, before, we're probably getting a little long here, but I, I do want to mention briefly the cinematography, which mm -hmm. I thought was really, really fantastic. Uh, to me, it looked like a lot of it was set, steady cam, if not all of it was steady yeah. cam. So there's just like a real liquidity to how things, how the camera moves. It's sort sure. of floating about, and it's almost uh, a character sometimes. I, I noticed that it would, you know, it would be on our characters, but then it would occasionally catch a glance at something sure. like someone's hands or some cleavage or, you know, I mean, that an was object. Just, that was just your eyes, Jared. No, I, there was a specific shot. <laughs> I, it, the, the camera literally was following, and then it, like, ducked over to, to some cleavage. And I'm like, oh, that's that's an interesting nice. camera move. Well, look at that. Um, so it really it made me feel like that was an intent to make the camera a character in itself. Maybe it was meant to be like, oh, this is this is the audience. Uh, they're in the room with these people, and maybe they would steal a glance at, at, at something. Yep. I don't know, but it's just something I noticed. The camera worked as our eyes, and and how we would maybe observe a situation like that. Yeah, exactly. Boom. <laughs> All right. So uh, we've talked long enough. Uh, this is a moment everyone is always waiting for in our reviews. Our scope score. The scope score is three and one half stars. So there we go. Three and a half stars. Three and a half stars. That's all we do is give three and a half star reviews, says Jared, behind the scenes. Wow. But that's, you know what? What do you do? It's a good film. That's what three we do. Three and a half stars. That's all we do is we see good films. You know, this is in theaters December 13th. Yeah. Uh, you should probably go see it. So yeah, check it out. Uh, Maybe yeah. do a, a Jennifer Lawrence double feature. Yeah, catch I mean, fire. It's American Hustle. Or maybe you watch A Team at Home. And then you go and you watch this film. Right, because you want to do a Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Or, maybe, or watch him, how about, maybe you just watch Silver Linings Playbook and then you watch this. I say you watch Russell. some episodes of Alias, season four. Okay. That's, That's what fair. I say. That's All fair. right. I think maybe some Too Close for Comfort, just to kind of warm yourself up for the laugh riot that is American Hustle. Yeah. There you have it. <laughs> so uh, for Jared, I am Shane. We don't know where Adam is. He's here somewhere. He's, he's in here. the back seat. So thanks for uh, watching this review. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you like us. Hello, subscribe, listen to the podcast. It's thescopeshow.com, people. Right, Jared? Wow, you just such grace getting that stuff out. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll see you next time for another movie review. Shane Crest out. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. Days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying, Arrivederci. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope. Scope.